Okay, so this is the next in uh, a series on introducing C programming on the Arduino. We covered uh, basic uh, variables, creating integers, and using simple if statements, simple is, if statements uh, with else, with else as well. And uh, this is the third video, and we're going to build on that knowledge. We are using a different kind of layout on Tinkercad. So if you look in the description, you can grab a copy of this to follow along with the, with the uh, code. So the focus is really on the coding side of it. And uh, you'll notice in the build here that rather than the old setup with just one LED hooked up on pin 13, we've got three different LEDs and they're connected to uh, pins uh, well, 13, 12, and pin 11. And uh, we've also got a couple of buttons which, we've in, which I've included, uh, which we won't use. Um, actually, we'll, we, might, we will use them actually. So we'll use these, we'll use one of these uh, as well. So let's start by looking at our code. If you'll remember when we're using a LED, we'll start with the LEDs, we have to set these pins to be output pins. And so that can be our starting point. And I think when we looked at our code from before, it would have looked something like, uh, it's, it would have looked something like this. We had LEDs here. We had done um, something like this, where we had a pin mode, and we set it to an output, and then later, uh, when we used a, uh, when we did digital write to a pin, sorry, I'm just going to delete all this and get us back to where we were. So, and when we were going to turn that pin on, we would do digital write, digital write, <laughs> pin 13, and in all caps, we would write high or low to turn it on. Okay, so this is kind of our starting point. And we have to do this for all three pins that are going to be outputs. So that's pins 13, 12, and 11. Now, you know, in class, we've had situations where just moving our project or getting it out to start working on it has caused one of the wires to break right where you inserted where it was inserted into the header pin you know caused like when the end of the wire was stripped it just kind of got nicked a little bit and eventually after uh, you know bending a few too many times it would break off We'd, we wouldn't be able to use that pin any longer and maybe that happened after working on a long project uh, you might have pin say 11 used many many times throughout your code and now you have to go and search for every single instance of 11 where it was used as the as the pin number and maybe there's many 11s in your code being used for other things you'd have to distinguish which ones are the pin number and change it and this is obviously this is a bit of a problem so one of the things that uh, you might want to do is decide to use a uh, something where so you use a variable, for instance, a variable that you know you might have your red LED, uh, or you might just call it red. You might set that, or you might call it red pin. You know whatever makes the most sense to you, and you set that to pin 13, or you set that to the value 13. For today, I'll just call it red. It's going to be a pretty simple, small program, and that way instead of uh, having to change these various you know instances where we're doing things with pin 13 instead of having to change all those you know because you had to move this to pin 10 at some point you just change this one line and everything else will change uh, throughout the code so that's a really smart way to organize some of these pin numbers and you know other aspects of your code if you think about it though, this pin value will never be changed. 
while run while the code is actually running. In other words, you won't have code anywhere that would say, oh, you know, we should take that value of red and we should we should add one to it because that's you know that's what we need to do. Well, you know what 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 would that pot? How would that ever possibly be a part of your code unless you are constantly rewiring this thing while it's actually running? This this is not going to happen. In fact, you really don't want anyone to change any of these values. Someone goes and modifies or changes or fixes a bug and in the process introduces something where this value actually does get changed. That would be a huge problem. So there is a, a thing, a uh, keyword in C called constant and uh, a feature of C is that we can force a variable to be a constant that prevents it from being uh, changed after it was initially created. So it's a kind of read-only variable. And in, in the reference manual here, you'll see their example is pi. It's a float, which we haven't talked about, but that just means a number with a decimal portion. And it's given the value 3.14, and that's called pi. And you wouldn't want anyone to change the value of pi while your code was running, because basically any time you used it at that point, it would produce some kind of incorrect response. So this forces this variable, and I've also put it in caps, because that's another convention that indicates to programmers that this is in fact a constant. It's a variable, but it's a constant. You must not change it. Let's just see for a moment if we can change it. Of course we can. All right, and we can run this code. And if we were to, uh, I've left some other stuff in here that wasn't here. So we're adding one to this red variable, and we're uh, also printing it on the serial monitor. Remember we were using that before, and you can see that obviously it's changing. And uh, let's introduce that constant keyword. And now you'll see we actually have an error at line 23 where we are trying to change it, and it says it's a read-only variable. So that does in fact prevent us from being able to change it, and that sounds like a great idea. So let's just stick with that idea and get our three uh, pins set up here so that we can make use of these three LEDs. We've going, we are going to set them all to uh, a pin mode. Uh, an output. And of course the other benefit is we can remember what the pin is. Yellow is much easier to remember than say pin 12, especially if we have to change it as we uh, you know as we move our project to another Arduino or any other thing like that. Okay, so that gets us to the point where we turn we're turning on this pin uh, the red pin here with this line and uh, I think the the kind of task we will try to do is we'll we'll try to just turn on a pin uh, any LED according to the value of a variable I maybe mean, we'll you know find a way to make it random or something um, using an if statement so Let's just say that uh, the you know the 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 LEDs here are going to um, we're going we're going to pick we'll we'll think of the random number part and we'll deal with the random number later but we'll pick a random number and if it's you know uh, an integer and then we'll we'll pick the number between one and three and if it's one then we turn on this LED. If it's two, we turn on this LED, and if it's three, we turn on this LED. And I know this is kind of a bit of a um, forced example, but uh, really I was hoping to just do a little more work with if statements. So 
we'll just call this variable num and I'll just set it to a value to get us started. It's value two, integer two. And down here we'll write an if statement that checks these uh, three conditions. So first condition would be if it's, remember that double equals? Double equals is, one equals is assignment, take the number on the right and assign it to the, store it in memory associated with this variable name num. And double equals is test if these two things are equal. So if this has the value one, then we would digital right, and we'll just go from right, right to left. So this is uh, the green LED. So we'll digital right green to be on. And you know, we used else before. So let's say if we were constrained to two LEDs, either the green one or the yellow one, then you know, if the value wasn't one, maybe then it was two, it would turn on the yellow LED. But we we can't do that with three. This does not work. This is not going to make any sense. Which one are we supposed to turn on in, in the event of this else statement? And but the in fact we can continue with more conditions. So if we wanted we could add a LIF statement. So there's a new piece of a conditional statement that we did not look at last time. It's just simply an additional, additional kind of clause. And this is a chained conditional, this whole structure. It's working with uh, a condition that is checked in, you know, in more than one place. The first condition is checked. If this is true, then line 29 executes. If it's not true, then we skip line 29 and we go to the next condition. And there could be many of these next conditions. In this case, there's just this one next condition. If it's in fact equal to two, then it runs line 31. And, you know, if we want to be explicit and check for just a value of three in this case, then sure, we could put one more on there. And if it was three, then this would turn on the red LED. If this was a value other than one, two, or three, then it wouldn't do anything because none of these would be true and none of these three lines would execute. And the alternative is to just use an else statement here. And it's not quite, this is not the same thing. It's definitely not the same thing. It turns on the green LED with value one. It turns on the yellow LED with value two, but it turns on the red LED in the event that it is not a one or a two. So any other value that isn't one or two is going to turn on the red LED. So that's what I mean by being explicit here. If this has to turn on only with value three, and you have some reason to believe it might do something else. Let's say for instance, it might be some kind of error and you just you know, want to print out to the serial monitor that that in fact was the case. You know, you could just say that error perhaps. Oops. Error, error. All right. <laughs> so there, we can do that as a kind of like final case where something didn't work properly. So that is the if statement with the else if clause able to do uh, able to do one more thing. Um, and I'm just going to add one more thing, and I, I will leave it there. I won't even do the random numbers. I'm going to, let's just run this, make sure it works. We had a number of two here, so we expect the yellow LED to light up. We put in a one, and we get the green LED lighting up. We put in a value of three. We put in 13 next, three, red LED, and uh, 13, like I mistyped there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Red LED, red LED, and error being printed out here. Did I leave? I did leave the digital right here. You maybe you noticed that I didn't notice that until just on the last one. So, um, so what I intended was thirteen, no LED turning on, and this error message coming out repeatedly. Remember this. This loop runs repeatedly after uh, setup runs once the first time, then the loop runs repeatedly. So uh, let's just yeah, 
I'm going to stop there. In the next video, we'll, we'll take it to the next step and we'll look at some random numbers. But uh, do try that out. Try out some if statements, some else if statements and else, and uh, see if you can get that working.